morning troops and welcome to the platoon live camp attack range. Today is the culmination of your jungle live fire tactical training which incorporate all the skills you've learned so far this week and combine them with the tactical skills you've learned during your time in Belize so far. My name is W02 Wes Dale from the Small Arms School Corps and I've been attached to the One Scots Guards Battle Group to assist in the planning and execution of Excise Mine Storm in Belize. So, so far this week then, You've started at the individual level, focusing on jungle-specific close quarter marksmanship skills. You then progressed onwards through the individual section level, and now we'll look at culminating at platoon level in a tactical action through the live camp attack. Fundamentally, operating in the jungle is soldiering in its purest form. It requires the application of basic soldiering skills performed to the highest of standards. Jungle training is different to other training on account of the, uh, si simply for the environment. With regards to tacti tactically moving, command's a huge issue. You can often only see 10, 20 meters if you're lucky in front of you. So the usage of link man is essential and radios are nigh on unworkable out here. So we use uh, high frequency radio, which again brings in new challenges. We're unused to using it uh, compared to its uh, VHF counterpart uh, to contact uh, sort of zero or higher. However, just for me to, con uh, to, to get communication with my section commanders is required to, by use of hand signal, uh, again, remaining silent as we patrol or just link man up the chain uh, to, to then maintain us on our course and our mission itself. So the jungle is out to get you. There's not only snakes, spiders, scorpions, there's also plants that will cause rash and irritation. There's st stuff like this as well. Um, small trees, large spikes on them, that go straight through your combat, stab into the skin. We use the expression, the jungle is neutral, because the jungle will always win. In this scenario, we'll see you led from your platoon harbour into the occupation of a forming up point, from which you will launch your attack onto a jungle enemy base camp. As you go through, you'll be required to systematically clear through and destroy a number of enemy positions in order to secure the enemy base camp. Okay, some of the key things I want you to take away to go through in terms of your own personal safety. Only engage clearly identified targets. If you cannot see the target, do not engage. Throughout this scenario then, you'll be assessed across three areas. The first area you'll be assessed in is your ability to stealthily occupy a form and up point, made more difficult in the jungle environment due to the thickness of the vegetation and the proximity of the enemy. The Bleasing Defence Force are a great asset for us out here. We learn about local tricks and tips as we move through the environment. They've passed on a lot of information and a lot of knowledge on a very low level to us guys um, and passing platoon commander their sort of spin on the tactics um, and how they would operate in this environment. Working with the Bleasing De Defence Force has been really interesting. So of course we have our tactics and our sort of TTPs from uh, Brunei. However, this jungle is very different to the, over there. It's a lot heavier, it's what we call primary. So the undergrowth is a lot greater on the ground with a sparser canopy above. So having their input, even if it's just for giving a ground briefing orders or just how they would uh, alter or adopt our tactics that are more suitable to the ground in front of us is a massive aid. The next area we'll be assessed in will be your concentration of fire and fire effect onto the target. This is made more challenging due to the complexity and the physical demands placed on you from the jungle environment. So, some of the safety points to take away. First of all then, if at any time you hear the word of command, stop, stop, stop. Apply your safety cat and remain exactly where you are, okay? If there's an incident on the range, the range staff will deal with it straight away. If you notice somebody next to you, if you a casualty, you can call stop, 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 and then start providing life-saving first aid immediately to that individual. The focus of this exercise is being on enhancing the soldier's ability to shoot, move, communicate and medicate in a harsh and unforgiving environment with high levels of humidity and temperatures often reaching in excess of 30 degrees. My top tip for operating here uh, from the sort of three, four weeks we've been out here is personal administration and discipline. Although kit and equipment is of course a priority, it needs to be comfortable before you come out here. Just maintaining your own body and equipment before you even get out is, is the first fight of any morning. Doing the basics right and doing the right thing at the right time 
If that means you're getting into your dry kit in the evening times and conducting that administration, you're doing it. If you need to move from a firing position, for instance, you're checking your weapon system, you're doing your shoulder checks and you're bounding backwards and you're making sure that man knows exactly where you are and all that good stuff. These little basics that you learn in training and depots will pay dividends out of here. And you'll be able to progress then to the FTX, complete that, and you'll come back as a better soldier and a better individual and a better team player within the sections and platoons that you work for. So finally, you'll be assessed in communication at all levels. This demands quick and precise target indications, followed by accurate fire control orders. Are there any questions? Oh, Charlie, fire team! Fire the access! Rapid fire! 